All right. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, this one's called A Grim Fairy Tale, Red Riding Hood. <laughs> Looks like this was written in Python. <laughs> Much power, strength, and teamwork, the White Witch rallied together both humans and witches alike to fight against the war. In doing so, many returned home as heroes, but some came back as traitors. <laughs> These traitors were none other than the witches, hated and persecuted by their own people, hunted down by their clansmen. Knowing some heroes had nowhere to go, the king called upon them himself. <laughs> For the first time ever, the king offered witches positions higher than many humans ever wished to achieve with the court. Some became political advisors to maintain peace, others were healers. The positions offered gave witches both nowhere to go, opportunities, and many were quick to take <coughs> many were quick to take up the offer as mercenaries. However, one was quick to turn down the offer from the king, the White Witch. He chose to leave for a life of solitude in the middle of a forest, five hours from the kingdom, and fifteen minutes away. Oh, okay, sorry. I would, <laughs> sorry, I, I, I didn't, that didn't register with me. Let's try that again. She chose to leave for a life of solitude in the middle of a forest, five hours from the kingdom and fifteen minutes away from a small village. Many years passed, and over the course of time, she had a child with an unknown man. It is believed he was a powerful warlord forced to keep the relationship with him to his to how he and she had come from his Despite being able to care for a child, Work, I arrived at the village doctor's shop on time. He is very happy to receive the much needed herbs after the winter flu had broken out. I leave soon after the exchange and upon doing so took notes of the crowd within the village square. <coughs> atop, the, atop a small podium stands Father Michael with two tall blonde individuals to his right and his daughter at Ayla to his left. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining me on this joyous occasion. We welcome the hero, Ansel and Gretel Anderson. They have become well known for 
far and wide for their heroic deeds, doing beasts and saving many villages. And we will be one of those. They have come here to eradicate the nightmare that has befallen us for many moons. So please make the young heroes feel welcome at our humble village. Father Michael steps down from the podium, allowing the tall woman to take his place and speak. Hello, everybody. Please proceed as normal as we will be staying for the next couple of weeks. If anything suspicious has occurred, we will inform us, and we will do everything in our power to bring an end to the tyranny brought upon us earlier. As the woman continues to speak, I notice the young man looking my way at first with a face of curiosity, then shock, disgust. That's supposed to be a girl. Crap. Damn bastard probably saw my hair. I turn to leave, but am blocked by the bodies of the individuals. Forcing me to swerve between people until I suddenly knock into a broad chest before me. Cowering over me is the hunter, cancel himself. <coughs> well, what do we have here? A little witch, I see. Glad you aren't blind. It would be hard to complete your job if your eyesight was shot. I watched that tongue of yours. Everybody knows witches are sinners, and it can only be sin that's brought about such bad events with this community. Um. Like you. Whoops. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't like either of these options. I didn't realize you spoke for God. I always presumed that to be Father Michael. However, I will make sure to repent for my sins. Do be careful and stay safe, Sir Anderson. We wouldn't want anything to come of you as you are our last hope. You damned, you damned witch. I'll kill you. Then kill that. Sir Anderson, stop. She is the grandchild to the White Witch. You must understand that she needs no ill will. Why was this information not disclosed that witches were known to live with them within the proximity? Well, uh, witches do have the freedom to live where they please now. And I figured maybe you would have become more accustomed to different races amongst your travels. I apologize if such vital information was left out when we requested your aid. Keep that. And so, have I told? <clears throat> okay, let's let's try that again. Hansel, what have I told you about being rude? I apologize for my brother's behavior. Our family was killed by a witch, so our experience with them isn't the best. We will try to keep our prejudice from affecting our work, but in turn, please do stay out of our way. I apologize for your love. I will do my best to not interfere with your duties. <coughs> okay, yeah. Uh, Cancel on the devil. Okay, I. Oh my god. I must have to mention or something. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. We will be taking our leave now. You have a good day. With that, the two take their leave, and after leaving earshot, Ayla lets out a long sigh of relief. You really must be more tactful while they are here. I don't want you to wind up hurt for something foolish. Act for or not, I'm a witch, and it's pretty obvious. How much I can do if they dislike me? Maribel! What? Don't we? Oh. I mean, okay, I thought she was calling out. Right. Sorry. What? They'll either shoot me through the heart, or they won't. If they know silver doesn't work any better than normal metals. Maribel? At least we have a little more concern for your safety. You know, 
things will be easy. Witches have faced persecution for centuries. Nobody in the village is fond of me for it. To begin with, the situation was bound to happen eventually. Even so, I'm glad you stood up for me. They have been a little less ideal otherwise. Thank you. Oh, well, of course. I'm heading home. Have a good day. You too. And Maribel? Mm -hmm. You're always welcome at the church, you know. I know. Thank you. With that, the two of us separate. I return home where I convey the rather concerning news to my mother and grandmother. I hadn't expected the best of responses, but I hadn't expected the response that I got either. Well, plan to... <coughs> Why did I say well? We must plan to take our leave quickly. We cannot stay here any longer. But, Mother, my child is still out there. Okay. This is going to be very difficult if this is all... If this is all, um... Girl characters, because I cannot do that to different girl voices. Oh, dear. All right. The two continue talking as, I, as if I am not there until finally I clear my throat loudly. Excuse me, we have been here for many years. Why are we suddenly leaving? They are werewolf, hunt werewolf hunters. We're fine. The two look at each other with concern. Honey, your mother and I are, are witches. You're more of a mix. Of what? Your father... He, he wasn't human. Rather, he was a werewolf. What? This news throws me for a loop, as I, always, as I was always led to believe I was half-human. Never showed signs of being a werewolf, and I felt my sister hadn't either. On top of this, werewolves were known to hunt every full moon. But it turns out, things were different for father. My mother and grandmother began to tell me about his past, how he came from a small, rare tribe of werewolves known to be peaceful, avoiding violence for any purpose but defense. Due to fear of their kind, however, the tribe was massacred and they made a few that survived and quickly separated from the chaos. My mother and grandmother came across him barely alive through his wolf state, but chose to care for him and in turn, he stayed around. For a while, my mother and he traveled in hopes of finding a few more survivors, but couldn't. Instead, the was on my mother. Instead, though, my mother became pregnant with me on the travels. They came home, got married, and settled in with grandma. What you're saying is true. Why would he take my sister? Everybody knows werewolves are territorial. They hate other werewolves. Not the woman. There is a shortage of female werewolves, and your sister has shown signs of carrying after her father. She was likely kidnapped for the purpose of breeding. Then that's a more reason to find and kill him. We need the hunters more than ever now. No! If they are to intervene, they will kill both the werewolf and your sister. More likely, they will kill all of us for the sheer fact you are also a half-blood, and your mother and I know about it. Wait, I'm a little confused on the story. Why would they 
know that our character's a werewolf. If we're not showing signs of being a werewolf. <laughs> I don't know. Despite years of persecution against witches whom now could live amongst the humans in peace, mostly, it wasn't the same for all races, and I had forgotten such. Orcs and goblins regularly toil, toil away doing the labor of humans while werewolves hunt humans and livestock to survive, meaning they could never be on peaceful terms. That sounds reasonable to me. So, even if we are half-bloods, this wouldn't be a situation treated any differently. My sister and I would no longer be seen as sinful witches by the humans, but rather monsters in need of being hunted and killed. I understand this is a lot to take in. How about you go to bed while your mother and I discuss things over? <laughs> That's kind of funny. With the amount of shock, I nod weakly, making my way to the bed where I lie and stare at the ceiling until early morning. <sighs> Morning, honey. How about you eat some breakfast? Grandma, Grandmama hands me some eggs to eat while I groggily wake up before joining me at the table. Oh, your mother and I discussed something. We're going to get ready to leave, but it will take us some time. Your mother will continue to look for your sister. You, however, need to start practicing magic and ways to defend yourself by whatever means necessary. What about the potions? I'll take care of them. You worry about yourself so your mother and I can worry about the family. Help yourself to my books, and if you need any help at all, do ask. Alright, thanks, Grandmama. Of course. Work to do. You finish up and get busy. I nod, letting Grandma go about her day and leave more time on my hands than I had before. Okay. It's a little difficult to focus, but I learned some of the stuff today. Found some good sticks among the thousands of Pereros. Okay. I decided it would be worth stopping by the village, so I pack up so I pack my things to begin the trip. There's nothing. some good sleep. I was surprised at how much I didn't know. How much time do I have? I almost forgot. I need to pick up the arrows Grandma Ma has made me. It was a little difficult to focus, but I learned some new stuff today. I received five wooden arrows. So I just do this cycle. I found a mauled bird and many feathers. They'll make great arrows. As I am exploring the forest, I encountered an owl. Might be a little difficult to land, but the feathers would make great for my arrow. I definitely have enough to take it down. I just have to not miss, I guess. Not attacking an owl. I decided it would be worth stopping by the village, so I pack up my things to begin the trip. Okay. 
As I enter the house, I leave some sticks and feathers I have found for Grandmama, in case she has time to make me extra arrows. <laughs> I was surprised at how much I didn't know. Okay. I guess we'll just do this. I'm ex absolutely exhausted. I better sleep before I pass out. I got some good sleep. <laughs> I've received six wooden arrows. I encountered a squirrel. The squirrel's so cute and such a nice white. Great for target practice. <laughs> it's some. Oh my gosh. Okay, we'll attack it, I guess. I missed the target. Uh, attack again. Okay, we'll let it go. Oh, okay. Now we just go home. Uh, I guess we'll just read and meditate. So I read for longer now. Okay, I don't want to attack the squirrel. I might have to proceed actually, so. Encountered a buck. Those antlers may be well sought out for if I can get the buck without hitting the face. How did you miss a buck with a bow and arrow? Critical hit. Killed the buck. Buck pellet. Buck. Um, I'll just say three, I guess. Okay, this is kind of cool. I didn't expect there to be this kind of RPG element. Finally, I have a chance to approach you. Maribel, 
singing growing up, even if the birds didn't. Ayla and I continue conversing with the people in the church until Father Michael approaches us and we'll end up with that and we'll start chatting. I'll go ahead and take my leave, not wanting to make things worse for Ayla. However, before I do, she gives me a hug and whispers to me. With that, she runs off to Father Michael and I swiftly take my leave. So I think I just have to finish or fill up these little bars here before I'm allowed to progress.
This looks interesting. Panting and out of breath, stomping at the end of the 
looks awful. Have you had time to rest? No, I don't know if I'm going to rest. I've never allowed him to rest before. I mean, you can use it for a few days if you want to get all of the dead. I'm going to get checked. I don't know, but I have to feel natural. Now, I don't see what's ground upon. So, that's the... So is death, and yet we have aliens held by Father Michael in the square every Tuesday. I understand, but we can't disobey him. Please, just let this one slide. Let's talk. I really was excited to see you again. I sighed, feeling defeated, and only she was on the on the matter. Two of us sit and began, and began chatting until around. Now we're at half. After the service has ended, and Father Michael comes to me. He's always giving me the cold shoulder, but this time it appeared as if he was extra pissed, so I took my leave to the hesitation.
Ooh, now this is interesting. The target killed the wolf. Interesting. Anything else? Another owl. I feel bad for killing owls. Let's go to the village, I guess. I've been out at the woods for so I've been out at the woods for so long, but it feels as if I haven't improved in the slightest. What am I doing wrong? Whatever, just a little more practice and I should be good. I shoot another arrow, aiming for what appears to be a brown buck. Be brown buck fur. But miss, thankfully. What the hell? Could have shot me there. Oh, I apologize, I didn't realize you were there. Can't tell if you're blind or have awful aim. Yeah, my my aim isn't the best. By the way, what are you doing here? Shouldn't you be in the village? I figured we'd best get a lay of the land. Werewolves are smart. I must know the terrain to get the least bit of... I must know the... Wait. I must know the terrain to be at the least bit of disadvantage. Okay. That makes sense. No, it doesn't. Maybe I'm just stupid. I'll head back then. I've been here a while anyway. Sorry for almost shooting you. Hold up. What? You can't expect me to let you wander off with that shitty ass aim and think that's okay. You're a danger hazard, and if I let you leave now... Well, I can't really improve without practice. True. Show me your aim. Uh... Get on with it. I take stance, grabbing an arrow and pulling back, and am almost done when she begins yelling at me. Oh my god, I didn't... Oh... Oh my... F Oh. Okay. I'm an idiot. <laughs> okay, uh, Gretel, Gretel's an angsty teen dude now. Oh my lord, who taught you to shoot? Posture. Hold yourself like a lady, not some weak woman with low shoulders. Although an old woman in such a state might have better posture than you. I apologize, that isn't very good... That isn't good enough for you. After many hours of posture practice, instructions of 
to buying a waste race upon other things, she concluded the end of my lesson. Next time you shoot like that, you'll be running laps around the village. This is way too much for some damn aim. No, posture isn't just about aim. It helps with breathing and comfort. A bad back is just a bad life. Don't forget this. God, how old are you? 23, why you ask? You sound like an old crone. Well, the woman who raised me was well beyond in years. It was no surprise to say such things. But you are a fast learner. Good job. I hope to see you improve more. And why not? Let's go to the village. Proceeding, I ask if she's controlled, but they shake her head. Explaining how she's always been a, a sickly child. Considering last week, that was not surprising. However, no announcement of the illness has been made, so I figured it was just to leave at home with everyone else and continue on.
It's so late, but I don't really want to go home. Too damn depressing. Well, guess some booze never hurt anybody. I walk in with music so loud I can't hear myself think. The men are rowdy as the women wait on their tables. I make my way over to, the table my, to a table myself, pulling out some copper coins and asking for the homebrew. <laughs> as I wait for it to arrive, I overhear some travelers stumbling in drunkenly. Is this like a thing that I can do, or...? Been a while since I saw an adventurer around here. Guess on a main road with huge bounties on werewolf's heads, I shouldn't be surprised. Even so, last thing I need is attention towards me. I drop my cape further over my head to avoid attention, but as I do, I hear one of the waitresses squeal. Um, excuse me, sir, but please refrain yourself. I have a husband. Oh, come on now, doll. I don't see a man. Plus, with me, you won't need to work a day in your life. My attention is soon drawn away from the commotion as another waitress brings me my drink while apologizing and taking her leave. I take a sip, feeling the drink has been ru ruined by the sour mood, but I figure I... figure I miss will... Miss will get us... Is that supposed to be might? Might as well get as much out of it as I can. Oops. Oh. Crash! Within minutes of me drinking my drink, it's all over me, and it's in... And, and in its place is one of the three adventurers from earlier. I look to find the culprit who threw him, and it's Hansel. What the hell, Hansel? I'm trying to drink over here. You owe me a damn drink. Should I, should I do the angsty voice again, or should I... You know what, I'll give him a, I'll try to do a, a girly voice for him. Oh, that's alright, girl. That... Oh, it's that girl. That girl? You have a fucking name. I wanted one drink to deal with the stress, and you're fucking ruining it. I hope you're... As I am yelling, I feel a squeeze on my bum and immediately go ballistic. Obviously, your father didn't beat the manners into you hard enough. Go to hell! I immediately cast a spell on the man, blowing a huge gash in his right hand. As I do so, the other two adventurers run towards me, but are quickly stopped. I like her about as much as the three of you, but if I can't hit her, neither can you, scrawny asses. The two other are taken out rather quickly and soon after Hansel and Gretel approach. Good posture. I'm proud of you. Can't believe you used magic in public, damned witch. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe if you hadn't thrown him on my damn drink we wouldn't be here. Huh? You're like what? 13? How is that even legal? 15 is legal age here, dumbass. And for your information, I am 19. You owe me, uh... On me. You help me out of my mentor... Help me out of my mentor always said to reward good behavior. I'm not a child. Maybe not, but everyone should be told when they're doing a good job once in a while. And that we had a surprisingly pleasant time. I never imagined that there would be a day when I would talk like this to humans, let alone hunters at that. Okay, wholesome. So I've been recording for about an hour now, so um, I do like this game, and I might come back to it and make like a part two, but I think I'm going to end that here for now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, and I think this is actually a pretty fun uh, game jam game. So, yeah, I guess that's it. See ya.